take your Bibles and turn with me, if you would, in the book of 1 Corinthians. I want to go to the 13th chapter, the chapter of charity, or the chapter of love. It's just 13 verses. I'll read them, and then I'm going to give you a, a brief outline of them. And I'm tired, okay? Yes, uh, that 96 degrees heat out there, the graveside, but I think every, all my energy left. 1 Corinthians 13th chapter, verse number 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited be nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But where there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a dark glass, a glass darkness, excuse me. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now by it, faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is why put that in the Bible? Why put that where he put it? Well, if you go back to the 12th chapter and study it, the church at Corinth was having enormous problems with spiritual gifts. They were being abused big time. They were being misused big time. And so, at the end of the 12th chapter, the last verse, he said, But covet earnestly the best gifts, yet show I unto you a more excellent way. He said, I'm going to show you something better speaking in tongues. I'm going to show you something better than prophesying or etc., etc. I'm going to show you a way to win. Amen. And that's to charity. Now, I had an old uh, elderly man, back when I was younger, <laughs> told me one day, he asked me the question, I was his pastor, a dear godly man. I've been blessed through my years of trying to pastor and serve God to have some men that just, I don't know where I'd be without them, okay? But this man was something else. An humble man, I'll say that about him. 
but he was so spiritual and loved God so. And he asked me one day what the word charity meant. And I, you know, I've always heard it's love. And it is. I'm not saying it isn't okay. He said, no, preacher, no. I said, uh oh, here we go. I was thinking he was going to carry me off on a limb and drop me or something. But he said, no. He said, think of it as this. He says, uh, charity is love with work clothes on. That's been a million moon ago since he told me that, but I've never forgot. As a matter of fact, I have do his funeral and related that into his funeral service. <coughs> but charity is love. The first three, the first three verses shows you and I that love is essential. You take love out of the church and you just got a religion. That's all you got. You got some do's and don'ts and a can't and can'ts, so to speak. But love is essential. It's essential and the very first verse tells us in our speech. Well, we need to learn how to talk with love. Amen. I mean, we don't need to be uh, wimp, so to speak. I don't know how to say it. But anyhow, you don't have to give up your convictions. You don't have to give up your belief to speak with love. You can tell people in love just, you know, how the mule eat the corn, so to speak. And you don't have to back up on that. But uh, you don't have to be ugly to tell people they're wrong. Amen. Amen. Uh, you don't have to be that way. You can tell them in kindness, in love, and that first verse talks about our, our speech and how we talk. And it, love is essential in our speech. In the second verse, it talks about love being essential in what we do, our actions. And uh, if you have this gift, that gift, and you can move mouth and all that, and he said, and you don't have charity, it costs you nothing. It doesn't do it. Uh, a lot of religious people, some of them preachers, etc., build themselves up to the place that people worship them. That's dangerous, by the way, if you ever decide to do that. Don't do it, please. But uh, put your faith, your trust in Jesus, worship Him, and nothing else. And you can't go wrong. But <coughs> there are gifted men out here. There are gifted women out here in our world. And I understand that. But when you worship them or they think there's something because they can out-sing anybody or they can out-play an uh, instrument better than anybody else or they can preach better than anybody else or whatever the, the example might be, it profits nothing. If it's not done through love, uh, Sister Debbie, bless her heart, I love her to death. And, uh, I went to the house the other day when I got news that her mama, and I talked with her there for a period of time, and uh, she said, now I want you, or we want you, I believe what he said, to do the funeral. I said, I have no problem. I said, David, I'll be fine. And uh, then she's called me at home several times, and she's not aggravating me. Get, don't you even get that idea. I'm here to serve. And Sister David's going through something that if you've never been through, you just don't know what we're talking about. But anyhow, she's called me several times and, and talked to me. And, and I'm thankful for that. But I don't, I have to be careful. It'd be a hard job to build Carlton up anyhow, okay? But I have to be careful to let people know it's not me. If anything good comes out of that funeral service, it was God. And God did that. Now, if anything was wrong, Carlton Allen did it, okay? Yeah, I live by that principle. But love is essential in what I say and how I say it. And I know sometimes you might think, well, he didn't do much with it, with it tonight. But I pray, Lord, 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 I pray. Uh, and ask God, please don't let me hurt people. I'm not here to hurt nobody. I don't have an axe to grind. I ain't going to look for one. Amen. You, you 
you do the axe grinding or whatever you want to do. I'm not going to get involved. Amen. I'm not here to do a lot of things, but love is essential in my in my speech. In the second verse, in my action. In the third verse, in my giving. If I give everything I've got, uh, money wise, uh, my house or our house, I should say, and everything we've got, if we was to give it and not give it through love, we've accomplished nothing. We have accomplished nothing. <laughs> Why did I give to this church? Uh, uh, Y'all don't get mad with me now. I don't give to this church. Now, the check's made out to the church, and that's the way you have to do it so it'll be legal, so to speak. But I give what I give to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I give to the Lord because of love. I, I don't see how God puts up with me, much less you. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I don't. We're a mess. We sit down and think about it. We're a mess. But love is essential in my giving, what I do. I, I try to, I got a call this week, and I won't mention it to you, but I got a call this week, someone asking me about this church, uh, giving them some money to do something that I'm not in agreement with. And, and the best, best I could, they caught me off guard, the best I could, I tried to speak to them in love and just say, well, that's, you know, we just don't do that. That's not what the money is given to the church for. And it isn't. I mean, you say, well, what was it? It's, hey, I'm, I'm not going to say. Okay? You go to bed tonight and ask God to give you a drink or whatever. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. But, and I was kind to them. And I hope I didn't, you know, hurt them by saying no. Amen. Some people, if you don't say yes to everything, you, they take it the wrong way, friend. And uh, that is not my money that's put in there, and it's not your money. It's his money. Amen. And we should do, and we should pray about how to use it, and use it in the right way. So, in our giving, love, yeah, love is a center. Now, when you come to the fourth verse, down through the seventh verse, it gets to show you that love is effective. It works. It works. There's a lot of things won't work. I believe I'm a I'm a disciplinarian. Get that big word? I was that way with my children. I'm still that way. Uh, that's my way of life. That's my way of doing things. And uh, my children thought I hated them, I'm sure, at times in their life. Uh, Sander, I'd be gone all day. That's the story of my life. How are we still married, I don't know. She hadn't had a husband very much. My children didn't have a daddy very much. I was always busy with somebody else's children. And seeing about them, getting them to camp, carrying him there, carrying them there, doing this and that and other stuff. And uh, that's just the way it was. Sorry, I apologize to my kids, every one of them, and ask their forgiveness. But uh, I'm sure at times in their lives they thought Daddy didn't love them. Because they thought the only word I knew was no. My children live a very protective life on our part. My children didn't go off and spend the night with nobody. Unless I knew the people real well, and that there was Christians, and not just by name only. Amen. I, 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 did, I love my youngest. And God gave me them youngest, not you. He gave them to me. And we were very disciplinary. We just didn't let our kids, my son, uh, oldest son, our oldest son, was playing football, and he's good at it. And they decided they'd have practice or have a game, I forget which one. Game on Wednesday night. I went to the coast, I said, I'm sorry, Jed won't be here. Oh no, preacher. Oh, he didn't call me preacher. He, he, we gotta have Jed. I said, you won't have him. Because we have church on Wednesday night. And I said, y'all need to reprogram your schedule a little bit. Amen. 
You said, would you be? No, I wouldn't be. I'm just standing on the principles I believe. If you won't stand on what you believe, you ain't worth a cent no man. Amen. If I don't believe, if I believe something, I'm gonna stand on it. I believe this is the Bible. I don't believe there's another one. I believe it's a money-making racket. And you will. And I believe they are changing the Bible so they get one just like they want, just like, amen, come on, praise God, I'm going to come in. Just like the Jehovah's Witnesses did, just like the Mormons did, they changed the Bible till they got one that suited their crazy beliefs. And the Baptist is practicing the same thing. You say, well, you don't own another one? I don't want another one. I got the real thing. That's like you ask me, don't I want another wife? You've got to be crazy. <laughs> I got one. I got the best one there is. Why would I want anything less than what I've got? And another translation, and it's a money-making thing. I don't care what y'all say. Then nobody got real convicted about the King James Version not being the real Bible. They didn't do it. They wanted to make a dollar. <laughs> Love is effective. It'll lose a child. You don't go out here visiting and go to people's houses and tell them they're going to hell. If you're doing that, stop. That's not the way to do it. Amen. Amen. That thief on the cross that asked Jesus to remember him, Jesus did not say, hey, you know you're on your way to hell? You know you're going to bust it wild over? You're going to burn like a cinder? No, he didn't. Jesus showed love. He said, this day you'll be with me. Amen. Amen. Show love. Go to that house. Go to that person, that individual on the job or wherever at school or whatever it might be. Go to them and pray. Don't, don't embarrass people. Amen. Amen. I would never go to Brother Thomas' house if I knew anything wrong with him, and I don't. And sit down with him and his wife and tell him what's wrong with him. No, I would not do that. I would not do that with any of you, whether it be him or her. I'm not going to do that. And God won't do it either. You're not going to lead people to the cross by being mean to them. Being up, well, you know it's the truth. Sometimes, folks, the truth is better not spoken. Sometimes the truth is better not written. Facebook. Let it lay, Louis. Amen. Leave it alone. Love is effective. It works. The Bible says love never fails. Well, that sure covers the subject. <coughs> Amen. Amen. It didn't say it work immediately. Hello. We have grown up in a society that we just got to push a button and it's going to happen. That's not true with God. You're not going to push his button. You might have to pray for years to see something happen. Not that you're praying wrong. Amen. Amen. But you might have to pray for years before that friend of yours gets saved. You might have to pray for years before that husband gets right or that wife gets right or the children gets right, whatever. You might have to pray for years. The love never fails. You don't have to be ugly to it. For goodness sakes, folks, I wish the whole church was here, but they're not. For goodness sakes, don't be ugly to a lost person. If you want to bless somebody out, bless me. Amen. These pretty good shoulders I got, I can tell you. Amen. I don't have to buy back. Get even. I'll give you a piece of my mind. You can't afford that. Don't even try. 
We're not blessed with a lot there. But love, <laughs> I said we, love, love is effective. It works. It works with your children. I'm not telling you not to discipline your children. The little ones I'm talking about. And sometimes they're bigger. <laughs> but don't get ugly with it. Amen. I'm telling you, some of these, uh, well, uh, let me let that, let, let, let that lay. But love is effective. It'll work, I promise. And I'm not talking about whooshy whooshy stuff. I'm talking about real love, agape love, that the Bible talks about. Love is essential. Love is effective. And then in that verse 8 through 13, love is eternal. It's always been here. And always will be. John 13, 35. By this shall all men know that you're my disciple. By the love you show one to another. Amen. Amen. And how we need people to recognize. Somebody talk to me today about that. How we need people to recognize that we are a Christian. We don't have to wear a shirt with it on it. We don't have to put a, a tag on our car and this and that. Uh, I haven't been through that era, okay? But just by the way we live in the business world, in, in our family life, in our church life, people will know. People will know. But it's all about love. All about us. us. Too many people, too many Christians have got bones to pick. You don't need any bones to be. Amen. It's a full-time job. Now listen to me. I'm through. It's a full-time job. If you will work on you, leave me alone. Or if I work on me, and leave you alone. Now if I knowingly, knowingly know that's an area in your life that needs improvement, I'm going to be pastor enough and I'm going to be Christian enough to tell you. Not meaningfully. No. But I can tell you in a way, I think the point to get over that that's wrong. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Get, quit that. Get that out of your life, whatever it might be. And I do that because I love you. I do that because I hate you. I want you to be a blessing to, to others. And you can through love. Through love. Amen. Ain't that good? You say, well, you've gone liberal. No, I haven't. But I believe love works when love opens the world. There's some preachers that are purely mean. She said, what's your name? I ain't going to tell you that. I have no thank you. But they are. And there's some preachers use the language behind that pool bill that should not be used. You're welcome. Got anything to say, Sister Adam? No, that's all there. That's fine. That's all over, okay. <laughs> Our hearts and minds clear. We face the have a word of prayer. I want you to come down if you would, if you want to. If you can't kneel, then.